Yeah, so this uh, a month ago or two, a month and a half ago, we dropped off our son at Southern Adventist University. Boy, was that tough. Um, I have a video of when we were saying our last goodbyes. I was videotaping you know, my son and, and my and uh, my wife and you know hugging there for a couple minutes and then seeing my daughter and him hug mm. i had a lot of allergies that day especially that hour and um so yeah and and what's what's been a blessing is that our son calls every night he calls every night uh, so that we can continue on what we do there at the dinner table. You know, when, when he was here, all four of us, the dinner table, that was our sacred time. Sacred time to, sh to not only eat, but to share, to laugh, to fellowship. And, and so we still do that. Um, and so I, I, I appreciate it. I know my family appreciates it very much as well. But this last week... Um, you know, he's taking, I don't know how many units, 15 units. And uh, he had a presentation to give. He's, he's in a Bible class. And in this Bible class, uh, uh, he's, he's like, uh, he's in a sophomore class. It's a sophomore class. On top of that, this professor, he's like one of the most difficult professors uh, in, in, the, in the school. And so, yeah, students, when he found out, he's like, oh, you're taking that class? Oh, with, with so-and-so? Ooh, ooh. And um, so anyways, uh, he had to give a presentation regarding the Trinity. And uh, he decided, you know what? I want, to get rid <laughs> I want to get rid of this presentation so that it won't be hovering over me. And uh, so he called me and um, just asked, you know, Dad, this is what I'm thinking. And then what do you think? And we were talking and so forth. And then there was this one point where there was just complete silence. And I knew. I knew. He was breaking. He's just that I'm just stressing out. I'm like, yeah, I know. I know. I just... I did not expect uh, this A and P, this lab. I didn't expect it the way I, I didn't study, and I didn't know I was supposed to study this and this and that. And just I'm, I'm so behind that. I'm so behind. You know. It's okay, bud. It's okay. You can do it, one step at a time. One step at a time. You do your best. That's all we're asking. Do your best. Have you been there? Where you just broke? Where you just, just let it out? They came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And his disciples said, he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. So he took his three amigos, Peter, James, and John, with him, and he began to be troubled and distressed. Then Jesus said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Please stay here and watch. He went a little farther and fell on the ground and prayed, that, God, if it's possible, that the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. And Jesus is in a vulnerable state. I wonder, I wonder as I put myself in his shoes, that he's trying to hold back tears when he's saying this. And the reason he's trying to hold back tears, I don't know, maybe, you know, he was taught, hey, men, boys, we don't cry. Or maybe he was taught that you don't show your emotions. 
You don't want your friends to feel sorry for you. Or you've cried before and, and, and you just dislike the attention or even having your friends worry about you. Maybe your family. Maybe you just don't want to cause a scene. You're just holding it in. I wonder, does he want to cry like my son? Does he just want to let go? And here we see Jesus in a helpless state. As many you know, as he enters in the garden, we see him going to the garden many times or to the mountain where he speaks to his father, but, but not this time. Because he knows he's about to die. So in this passage, he opens himself. He opens himself to God. In this passage, he opens himself up to or to his friends. In this passage, he's opening up to you and me. And what is he saying? I'm scared. I'm scared. Now for a grown man to say, I'm scared, that's serious. But for the Son of God to say it, that doesn't, that doesn't make sense. Why doesn't it make sense? Well, this is the same God that, that said in Matthew, 4, Matthew chapter 4, away with me, Satan. Get away. This is the same God that cast out demons. This is the same man who, 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 when the experts of the Torah, the Pharisees and Sadducees came up to him and tricked him, he, he shut them up. This is the same man who healed the sick, who resurrected a few from the, from the dead. This is the same man where when he was on the Mount of Transfiguration, there saw a miracle with God saying, this is my beloved son. And right there with him, Elijah and Moses. This is the same man, the Son of God, who was sleeping in the boat during a horrific storm. And then he wakes up like nothing. And gets after his disciples. Guys, what's your faith? And then tells the storm, hey, behave. This is the same Son of God in a different storm, who walked on water. So, when I see the Son of God being scared, I have a huge question mark. Why? Why, Jesus? What is it? And then you see a few words in verses 33 and 34 of Mark chapter 14. Verse 33 says, And he took Peter, James, John with him, and he began to be troubled and deeply, what? Distress. And then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful feel like I'm going to die. See, the word distressed or deeply distressed in the Greek can also be translated astonished, to be surprised. Why would he be astonished? Why is he stunned? From what? What would change him to become in a state, in a state of distress? It also says that, that Jesus was troubled. And the Greek here means to be overcome with horror. Jesus is frightened from what he is about to experience here in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's astonished, stressed out, troubled, terrifying, to the point where he says, my soul is overwhelmed. Hmm. 
What is he experiencing? Have you ever seen or experienced a tragic death in front of you or someone close to you? Out of nowhere, phew, they die. And do you remember that feeling? Like you're just in shock. You have all these emotions and feelings. I, I remember the time where my first year in ministry, I go to, to my, my first church as a, as a youth pastor. And it is a, a church of 500 members. 500 members who speak Spanish. And in that time, my Spanish was horrible. Um, I understood, but I could, it wouldn't come out. Three months into my ministry, the senior pastor dies in a car accident. I remember the news. I remember going home and my wife and I just crying and asking, now what? He was supposed to be my mentor. He was supposed to train me. Now I'm, I'm up in line. I, now I have to lead this church. Nausea, disbelief, anxiety, fear. This is all, all the emotions that Jesus is feeling at this, at this moment. He is so distraught that he needs his close friends to be with him. The Desire of Ages says that Peter, James, and John did walk with him, just like the Bible says, but they carried him through Gethsemane because the weight was so heavy for Jesus that he couldn't walk anymore. As a matter of fact, when he goes to the place of prayer, it, it says that he fell, flopped to the ground. The weight. The burden. It was too much for him. He's breathing heavily. I just want to pause here for a little bit. But notice he had three friends. Three friends to help him. I want to ask you, do you have someone that you can share your burdens with? We're in a crisis with mental health today. And many times it's because we don't know what to do with our problems. Instead of sharing it with others, we're behind a screen. Or we go behind a monitor and we just try to numb it out. We need to share. We need to share. And Jesus had three. You don't need two or three. You, you can just have one. One to support you. Because in actuality, we need each other. Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. It says, bear one another's burdens. And when you do that, you do what? You fulfill the law of Christ. And the law of Christ is all about love. Love your neighbor. Bear each other's burdens. Christ had 11 disciples with him in that night, but he chose three. He chose three because those, threes, those, those three people he could trust. They were close to him. They understood him. Share your burdens with someone. So what is it? What was in the garden that left Jesus in, 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 in a sense of awe and, and, and it shocked him? What surprised him? 
You see in his prayer to the Father on you know, verse 36, Mark 14, 36, he says, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but you will. Cup. Cup. Take this cup away from me. What is this cup? Obviously, it's not Psalms 23, 5, when he says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup, my cup runs over. It's not that type of cup. It's a different cup. Allow me to share you how uh, a few uh, uh, verses that describe this cup. Isaiah chapter 51 verse 22. Isaiah 51:22 says, "Thus says your Lord, the Lord and your God who pleased the cause of his people." See, I have taken you out of your hand the cup of what? Trembling. The dregs of the cup of my what? Fury. You shall no longer drink it. Mm, this drug, drug, uh, cup makes you tremble. There's anger. Ezekiel chapter 23, verse 33 you will be filled with drunkenness and sorrow, the cup of horror and desolation. This cup doesn't sound good. As a matter of fact, we also read in the New Testament, and you know it very well, in the third angel's message, Revelation chapter 14, verse 9. Then the third angel followed him, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand. He himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. Into the cup of his anger. So the cup that Jesus wants to pass by it is a metaphor for the wrath of God towards the evil. It is a picture or an image where God's justice is poured out on the injustice on planet earth. You see Jesus, the Father, and the Spirit, one. They were tight. They were all there in Jesus' baptism. There at his baptism, again, Jesus said, this is my beloved son. The father showed him love. And he showed it to him in many different ways. They performed miracles together. They fed the 4,000 and the 5,000. Jesus would always want, run to his father in the mornings. Sometimes he would last all day. Because he felt his love. My father loves me so much that it's so contagious. I just want to be around him. But here, in this passage, in this garden of Gethsemane, Jesus goes towards the father like he had done before. But this time, he's not feeling it. He's not feeling his father's warmth. He's not feeling his father's love. All he sees before him is this cup. This cup of God's wrath. And it scares him. Separation. Where are you, Father? It's like an abyss. It's, it's, it's empty. Where are you, Father? God, you are life you are light you are love and for 33 years I've experienced all three but now he's experiencing death darkness and detestation which is intense dislike separation and Jesus is experiencing a, sh a shutout. 
from God's presence. That which brought him joy and peace, he can't find it. Dad, where are you? I don't like this feeling, Dad. I'm scared. So Jesus started to experience the separation because of sin. And it will only get worse when he goes to the cross. Father, if I'm experiencing this now, I don't know if I can go to the cross. If it's dark now, how much more darkness am I going to experience at the cross? Wrath. We don't like to speak of God's wrath. We love it when we talk about his love and amazing grace. Let's talk about God's love. And I say amen. I love my love, my, my loving God. I know you love my loving God, right? He's a loving God. But we can't say, don't talk about God's wrath. Just because it's not appealing? <laughs> you see, a loving God needs to be angry. A God who loves also needs to be a God who gets angry. Especially for planet Earth. Isn't it true loving people can get angry? We are loving people. And we can get angry. I love my kids. If I see a kid hurt my, I am not going to be smiling. When my daughter, who was in kindergarten, is telling the little boy, get off of me, and this little boy doesn't want to get off of him because he wants to kiss her, and she says, stop, stop, stop. I am going to, well, you know. A loving God has to get angry. The more close and more uh, love you have for the people in your life, the angrier you get. When you see someone going to, uh, on the wrong path or hurting themselves and you don't get angry, it's because we don't care. We practically just don't care. When we don't see justice being done, we should get angry. God's wrath stands for justice. Those who stand for justice and see that it is being trampled on Yes, get angry. When you see drag king queens and the pornography industry push their agenda in our elementary schools, yes, that should make you angry. When they say you cannot influence your children's sex identity, that should make you angry. When they said you say you can't read your Bibles anymore, that should make you angry. When they say you cannot worship on the Sabbath day any longer, that should make you angry angry so when God gets angry it's because he loves you the world doesn't love you this planet earth it may seem like it does but really it's against you 
this world wants you to fail. If God's wrath is not poured out, we're in trouble. Because we will be destroyed by sin. So God's wrath is against sin. Towards the sin of the world. And the sin is so heavy that it's pushing Jesus away from his Father's love. He is experiencing and, and feeling God's anger. And that's why he's scared. Father, I'm scared. And I don't know if I can go through this. Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will. Not my will, but your will. And so here we see that Jesus understands that he can't put faith into what he's feeling. His feelings of separation and fear may be interfering with the Father's plan, and he knows it involves death. God's plan involves death. But he is wondering and asking if the Father can change it a little bit. Is there another road? Is there another way? Isn't it true when we are in the greatest time of fear? When we are tempted? Or when we have a lot of pain? We want out. We want help. And when this is happening, many times we're not thinking straight. Just the emotions, just a lot of emotions. These are the times when we blurt out our loudest desires. These are the times when, when you make self-destructive decisions. And these are the times when you say and do things that you know that are hurtful. And sometimes undermine, many times, undermine the people that you love and value. Like they say, true colors come out in these, during these difficult times. Yet, not what I will, but your will. See, Jesus will obey the Father regardless. He cannot trust his senses. He cannot trust his feelings because he knows that is what Adam and Eve did. And they saw the fruit. They took the fruit. They tasted the fruit. Instead of confiding and sticking with God's word. Don't do it. He must trust his father. He must trust his word. He must remember and hold on to those 30 years or so and remember everything he learned and experienced with his father. He also knows that his immediate desire is for his life is to be spared at that moment. But this is not the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to spare you and me. That is why he needs to submit in obedience. That's why he can't rely on his feelings. Not your will, not what my will, but what you will. You see, one day you and I, right before Jesus comes, we will experience a time of trouble as never before here on planet Earth. You know it very well. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. It starts with, at, the, at that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands and watch over the son of your people. And then it says, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation. 
even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. At that time, it's talking about when that little horn just goes, goes all out and starts persecuting. At that time, the great controversy says that many people will look at their sins and they'll be making sure that they confess all their sins, making sure that they're forgiven because they know the wrath of God is about to be poured out. At that time, it doesn't have to be at that time. At that time can be right now. You may be going through some time of trouble. And so I'm asking you to look at your Savior. He experienced it. And because he experienced it, you and I can go to him. And he can sympathize with you and me. He understands the burdens of this world. He understands your hurt. He overcame it. He knew his word. He sought help. His friends helped him. And then in the book of Luke, Luke says that the angels of heaven came to Jesus and strengthened him. That which happened to our, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ can happen to you. 12.1 says, His people will be delivered. Because Michael is there, Jesus. And God loves you. God loves you. So seek help. Share with someone your struggles. Share with someone your burdens. Don't keep it to yourself. And stay in the word. Because you'll be amazed. He will lift you. He will lift you up. He will comfort you. And he will deliver you. Let's pray. Father God. So we see Jesus in this vulnerable state where his body is going out of whack. We even know that he was sweating sweats of blood. He was dying from the inside. He was so scared. And God, today, many of us have gone, are going, or will be going through times like these. I want to thank you, Father, for allowing us to see Jesus in this, in this way. Because it allows us to see that God understands me. And just like Jesus won at the cross, we too can win every single day and even at the last. And so God, I'm just asking that your spirit may continue to work in us, through us, and for us so that we may be delivered, so that we may see you face to face and thank you. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen.